Formula One was built on the foundations of pay drivers and playboys since day one back in 1950. The Formula One grid has been teaming up the drivers paying their way, yet we're still up in arms about this even in 2020. The latest addition to the Formula One grid is this man. Nikita Mazepin. The public perception of him is not that great. Many see him as a driver making up the numbers with an abundance of wealth and backing but not much in the way of talent. Is this true or is there more to Russia's new Formula 1 driver? So let's begin by talking about his background and where the dough came from. Nikita Mazepin was born in Moscow, Russia, and is the son of Dmitry Mazepin. Now this guy comes in very handy, more handy than he is taking two chemical related companies, one by the name of Eurochem, which is a manufacturer and fertilizer, and the other is Eurocali, which also makes fertilizer and potash. Now if you watch F2, you might recognize Eurocali's name as it sponsors a high-tech team, the one that Junior Mazepin drives for at the moment. They mainly produce the same stuff as they are partially owned by Dmitry Mazepin and due to how big Russia is, these companies have earned Dmitry Mazepin a net worth of $7.1 billion, which is almost three times the amount of Daddy Stroll, which makes Lance Stroll look like a hobo compared to Nikita Mazepin. So let's see if Mazepin has gotten rid of the pay driver status as I take a look at his career so far. So Nikita Mazepin made his karting debut at the age of 12 in 2011, but didn't have much success. Although, to be fair, he was a rookie in karting, so let's give him a bit of time, shall we? And for 2012, he competed in six championships. Again, he didn't really stand out, but there was one championship he did remotely decent in, and that was the WSK Euro Series. He competed alongside 54 other drivers, including the likes of Sergio Sete Camara, Robert Schwartzman, Nico Kari, Jehan Daruvala, Pilip Ferrucci, Dan Tictum, all or also known as Dick Tantrum, Dorian Boccalacci, George Russell, Callum Ilo, and Alex Palou. And in this championship, he finished only 22nd. So, so far, you have to question why this dude is in Formula 2, and obviously now in Formula 1. But in 2013, he began to prove his worth as he finished fourth in the WSK Supermaster Series KFJ spec, as he finished just behind Alessio Lorandi, Milkman Norris, and a dude named Nikita Sitnikov. Keep in mind this field was filled with loads of talent and current and past GP3, F3 and Formula 2 drivers such as Mick Schumacher, American Passionate Boy Sargent and Seti Camara. He also finished 9th in the Italian Championship KF3 spec. This may not seem good but he did finish ahead of Norris and in 2014 he spent his final year of karting in the CIK FIE World Championship where he finished runner up yet again with Norris in front of him in first. And due to these good results you have to think that he would move into single seaters and he would. As for 2015, he would compete in the MRF Challenge, the Formula Renault 2.0 NEC Championship, and the Formula Renault Euro Cup 2.0, and also the Toyota Racing Series as well. So alongside Sir Lancelot Stroll, Mr. Pelik Ferrucci, Artem Markolov, Ferdinand Habsburg, Seti Kamara, and Eilat. He only finished 18th, but keep in mind, Eilat was only just ahead of him in 16th. So you have to- At this point in the video that I would like to explain that I forgot to mention his results in Formula Renault Euro Cup, the MRF Challenge, and the Formula Renault NEC Championship. So in the NEC Championship, he scored one podium at the Red Bull Ring, and in Formula Renault Euro Cup, he was a guest driver, so he was ineligible to score points. And in the MRF Challenge, that was a bit of a nothing series since nobody decent competed in that. So he and again why this dude's in F2? You have to say at this point, oh his dad has lots of money and that's why he's in single seaters. But hang on, calm your asses, okay? Because 2016 he would mm, okay, never mind, forget about what I said. He competed in European F3 and finished just 20th in the championship. As he, despite driving for high tech alongside Ru Russell, Ben Barnico and Alexander Sims, again he was a test driver. He finished 20th in the standings, uh, and he, and then before you say, oh, he was a rookie, Barnacle finished 9th in the championship and also was a rookie. And once again, he competed in Formula Renault Euro Cup 2.0. He finished only 16th in the standings, but 
considering he would have finished at round about last in the previous season, he only competed in four races, and his best finish was fifth in Monaco. So that wasn't too bad, but the other series were total disasters, as he would also compete in Macau again with high tech and again being teammates with George Russell. However, his other team would be mate would be Daniel Yunkadea. And in the quali and for the qualifying race he got out qualified by both Russell and Yunkadea, as Russell was on pole and Yunkadea was in eleventh, while Mazepin started and finished in eighteenth in the qualifying race. Meanwhile Russell was fifth and Yunkadea was seventh, and in the main race he decided to end his whole career by crashing on lap one. Sorry, lap three. And then, the final championship he took part in in 2016 was the 2016 British F3 Championship, where he stood in for Lando Norris at Carlin. And finally, finally, he took his first single-seater win that year at the Snetterton round, which was the only round he competed in in the second race. And then for 2017, things looked to be on the up for him, but again he competed in F European F3, again for high tech, but it was more of a disaster of a year than you would probably expect. You'd be expecting him to finish top 5 in the championship, but he only finished 10th. He only scored lad. But at this point he looks completely an utter garbage. Gob crap. Gone. He shouldn't be an F2. But, in 2018, he would begin proving himself. I'd also like to mention that all of his teammates, barring the Tadasuke Makino, finished ahead of him. But, as I said, 2018, he proved that he was a very decent driver, as in his first year of GP3, he finished runner-up to the late great Antoine Hubert, as he'd be driving alongside Hubert, Callum Eilat, and Jake Hughes at ART. He took four wins, but was inconsistent to, compared to Hubert, who scored two wins and 11 podiums, as Mazepin had scored four wins and eight podiums. Overall, I have to say at this point, Mazepin has proved himself, and I have to say at this point he did look good enough for F1. Um, and you have to say, give him time to get used to the car, and he will perform just as you would probably expect in the midfield. But 2019, all of his reputation would just shatter as he would move back, to, uh, as he would go up to F2 with the RT again, and he'd be teammates with Nick De Vries. Keep in mind that De Vries had two years more experience than him, but that wasn't an excuse as to how absolutely and utter crappy this season was. Although, to be fair, I'm pretty sure ART were favouring De Vries over Mazepin, but Mazepin scored just 11 points in five occasions as well, as he would score points in Baku, which was a race of attrition, both Monaco rounds, Monza, mainly due to the unfortunate accident at Spa, and Yas Marina. He scored only 11 points, as I said, but in 2020, his reputation would get back to the way it was at the end of 2018, as he as he would score points, podiums, and wins. As in, as his momentum started in the second Austria round, in the second Austria in race of that season, where he would score just one point. But in Hungary, he took his first podium, and then he consistently scored points before achieving his first win a few rounds after. Um, a few rounds after Hungary at Silverstone, and then he would go on to have another podium at Spa. Now this was quite controversial, and I'll talk about that later on. And then he would take another win in Mugello, and then another podium in Sochi. And at the moment, he's fifth in the championship, tied with Robert Schwartzman. But keep in mind, Schwartzman is a rookie. I forgot to mention he's comp he was competing for high tech and currently is. So you have to say that he's doing pretty decent. And it's now time I asked I answered the question, is Nikita Mazepin more than just a pay driver? Despite incidents that have tarnished his reputation, such as in Spa when he hit, nearly hit Yuki Tsunoda with a bollard after being given a penalty for overtaking him illegally, and actually it was vice versa, he shoved him off the road, saying George Russell is gay, obviously there's nothing wrong with being gay but the fact just isn't true, and making a horrible joke out of COVID-19, which is something that can only be rivaled by Donald J. Trump. Yeah. I would say that if he is given enough time, he could develop as a pretty decent driver at Haas in the midfield. He may get too much hate due to his checker book, just like Lance Stroll, 
But as we've seen with on several occasions, it was more to him than his daddy's cash. So much like we've done, or, well, most of us anyway, we should allow for Mazepin to develop as a driver in F1 and maybe, just maybe, he could surprise us all and be a very good driver. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please sub consider subscribing, smash that like button, and I'll see you all in the next video.